Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about two cavity cluster on amplifier which is very very important. Okay, from examination point of view, it is very very important. Two cavity cluster on amplifier. Okay, it is a type of O type tubes, linear beam tubes. Okay, so let us see first the what is the constructional diagram of this uh, two cavity klystron amplifier and as well as uh, the explanation of the operation or the principle of operation with respect to the applicate diagram okay so what do you mean by a two cavity klystron two cavity klystron is basically an amplifier two cavity klystron is basically an amplifier which is used to amplify the rf input signal at the output okay so a two cavity klystron a two cavity klystron amplifier is basically is basically a velocity modulated velocity modulated tube velocity modulated tube so you need to remember one thing here the two cavity cluster on amplifier basically works with the principle called velocity modulation two cavity cluster on amplifier works with the principle of velocity modulation i will explain what do you mean by velocity modulation and how the velocity of the electron changes with respect to time depending upon the applied voltage potential now here a high velocity electron beam here a high velocity electron beam is formed and sent down along a glass tube along a glass tube through an input cavity like a buncher cavity okay so actually it is a two cavity klystron two cavities are there cavity resonators are there those resonators are are in the oval shapes okay generally two cavity klystron are made up of cavity resonators cavity resonators are here two types of cavity two cavity resonators are used which are known as buncher cavity and second one is catcher cavity buncher cavity is the cavity where the input is applied and catcher cavity is nothing but where we are collecting the output okay that is the reason why it is known as two cavity klystron amplifier klystron is nothing but the glass tube which are using which we are using and uh, which is used to pass the electron from input cavity to output cavity or buncher cavity to catcher cavity okay uh, a field free drift space and an output cavity to the collector elaborate that is the glass tube that we are using and it is having uh, two cavities i told you now the anode is kept the anode is kept at a positive potential with respect to with respect to cathode that means cathode is at negative and anode is at positive okay the electron beam passes through the electron beam passes through a gap a there are two gaps gap a and gap b gap a is near to the catcher uh, what is the bunching buncher cavity and gap b is near to the catcher cavity you can understand all these when you see the diagram i will explain so gap a consisting of consisting of two grids of buncher cavity 
separated by a very small distance very small distance and two other grids two more other grids are there at the catcher cavity again they are separated by a small gap that is gap b okay the input and output are measured from the cavity resonators only input is applied at the catcher puncture cavity and output is taken at the catcher cavity so another grid at catcher cavity catcher cavity has a gap b okay input is applied input is at puncture cavity output is from catcher cavity okay this is what the story behind the uh, uh, klystron amplifier now let us see the construction of the klystron amplifier how it is constructed and what is the principle of operation behind this see here this is the construction of the klystron amplifier where it is having two cavities see here this is the buncher cavity and this is the catcher cavity buncher cavity acts like input cavity and catcher cavity acts like a output cavity now this is the glass tube the electron gun is placed inside the glass tube this is the glass tube which is having a straight line from here to here like this from input to output this is the glass tube this glass tube is known as klystron this glass tube is known as klystron now this is the electron gun energized with the input voltage like this v okay so this electron gun is connected to the cath uh, is connected to the cathode and the other side we are having the anode anode is kept positive i have written some matter there anode is kept positive with respect to the cathode so here the electron gun is connected at the place where it is having a cathode potential cathode which is a negative potential on the other hand it is having a positive potential which is connected nothing but anode which is uh, connected with a collector collector is used to collect the electrons that are produced by this electron gun okay now this is the place where we are applying the input through a coaxial cable from this buncher cavity as i told you there are two cavities one is used to take the input signal it is an amplifier so it takes the input signal amplified and again sent to the output so that uh, taking of input signal is from the buncher cavity which is known as input cavity and the second cavity is known as output cavity which is uh, producing the output that is amplified and sending to the out, out through a coaxial cable loop okay now this is the actually rf signal input we are applying in this way this is the rf signal which is having some input uh, potential the uh, strength and as well as time period now in the absence of this rf input voltage in the absence of this rf input cycle when there is no rf input remember clearly when there is no rf input what is the general operation of this klystron amplifier see here cathode is applied with negative and anode is applied with positive as po we know that positive terminal is used to collect the electrons it, it attracts the electrons so when electron gun is energized electrons or beam of electrons are traveled from cathode to anode cathode to anode in this forward direction in this direction okay now in this time as there is no input voltage applied at the buncher cavity the electron travels from cathode to anode with the same velocity the electron travels from cathode to anode that means it travels throughout this klystron tube with a constant velocity that velocity is proportional to that velocity is proportional to applied potential between cathode and the anode so that means v naught is equal to 2 e v by m under root 
okay so 2 ev by m under root so 2 ev is nothing but this is the v which is the potential applied between the cathode and the anode because that is responsible for the electrons to move the electron from this uh, cathode to anode nothing but throughout the klystron tube now the electron travels with a reference velocity this is the velocity of electron when no rf input okay so this is the velocity of electron that travels from this uh, cathode to anode now come to the coming to the case where the rf input is applied for the amplification rf input is nothing but radio frequency input that radio frequency input is having a sinusoidal signal in nature that sinusoidal signal is having positive peak and as well as negative peak positive peak and as well as negative peak coming to this condition where it is having zero potential here okay i am uh, enlarging the signal see here this is the type of signal we are applying at the rf input through a coaxial cable into the buncher cavity now remember buncher cavity and catcher cavity are separated by a distance l are separated by a distance l that is nothing but drift space drift space now this is gap a this is gap a at buncher cavity and this is gap b at catcher cavity buncher cavity we are having a gap nothing but this area that is gap a and this area is gap b okay at this gap a the electron is changing its velocity that's why we need to note that point as a gap a now take this as positive peak and take this as negative peak at this particular point what is the voltage zero at this particular point what is the rf input voltage zero again at this particular point what is the rf input voltage zero during this zero rf input voltage what is the velocity of the electron that crosses the gap a because zero is nothing but we are treating that zero is nothing but no rf input is applied that means <coughs> that means the electron which travels through the gap a will have the same velocity as you are having normal condition as you are having the velocity of the electron when there is no rf input okay that means during zero rf input voltage electron travels with same velocity v naught what do you mean by v naught v naught is nothing but the velocity v in the normal condition when there is no rf input voltage at this particular zero instance also the electron will be having the same potential okay we are treating that voltage as a reference voltage reference voltage or the electron which has this particular voltage is known as a reference electron reference electron is the electron which travels with the same velocity like when there is no rf input voltage so we are treating it as er nothing but reference electron okay this is one condition now coming to this high positive peak during this positive peak during this positive peak how the electron travels and crosses the gap a now as it is having high velocity high positive period peak the electron will be somewhat excited and attracted by this positive signal so that there will be a change in the velocity of electron that travels in the previous case okay there will be a change in the velocity of electron that travels normally when there is no rf input voltage so during this positive peak the electron travels with high velocity compared to the high velocity compared to the normal reference electron which is having v not velocity okay so during positive peak of input voltage or of input rf input voltage 
the electron travels with more velocity than reference electron that means velocity v is now greater than v naught velocity v is now greater than v naught and this electron is known as late electron this electron is known as late electron which travels with more velocity now opposite is the case with negative potential so during negative rf input during negative rf input voltage what happens the electron travels with electron travels with low velocity electron travels with low velocity than reference electron so now v is less than v or the velocity now it is less than standard velocity v naught okay so this electron is known as early electron early electron okay so coming to this coming back to this diagram so the electron that means at this particular gap a gap a is having highest significant that it can generate three types of uh, electrons so they are reference electron early electron and late electron reference electron is the electron which travels with the same standard velocity v naught and early electron is the electron which is xp which is opposed by this negative input potential and travels a long distance with low velocity travels a long distance with low velocity and whereas this late, uh, third one is the late electron late electron travels with high velocity which is greater than the standard velocity and because of these three uh, with different electrons they are creating some bunches this is a bunch and this is a bunch which is produced at different distances so this bunch electron bunch because of this electron bunch the signal will be amplified and sending coming out from this rf output suppose if at all any electron that uh, uh, out comes out from this electron bunch that will be collected by this collector that will be collected by this collector so the there is a highest impact of these three electrons that are creating the bunch of the group bunch is nothing but a group of electrons that are influencing the rf signal to amplify rf signal to amplify when it is traveling from buncher cavity to the catcher cavity okay this is what the construction of this uh, klystron amplifier and i will explain the same operation with respect to the applicate diagram applicate diagram is very very important which is helping us to explain how the late electron early electron and reference electron travels from buncher cavity to catcher cavity see here this is the applicate diagram and this is the positive peak and this is the negative peak okay <laughs> now this is the time taken this axis refer this axis refers to the time taken by the electron to travel through the drift space nothing but from buncher cavity to catcher cavity as i told you three electrons are there late electron reference electron early electron at this high peak at this particular highest peak the electron is named as late electron and this late electron travels with highest velocity compared to the v naught okay and reaches a particular point here now at this condition b it is having a zero potential a zero rf input voltage i told you already at this particular zero potential the electrons are uh, traveling with the same constant velocity like your uh, basic standard velocity which is known as that's why a reference electron which travels with the velocity that is equal to the standard velocity v naught and again reaches this bunching here that means at a distance l at a distance l it reaches here that means you see here position of gap a position of gap b it is b now at this particular point a it is having highest negative peak because of this highest negative peak the electron 
converted its velocity which is low compared to the standard velocity so now it is early electron has to travel more distance and reaches this particular point at the gap b that means it, it the these three electrons travels through the drift space and reaches all three together at a same place that's why they are creating a bunch this is what the bunch okay this is how the bunching process is taking place now have you observed any change in the velocity of the electrons yes there are three types of velocities one is the standard velocity v naught another one is greater than v naught another one is less than v naught this is what the meaning of velocity modulation this is what is the meaning of velocity modulation. How this velocity modulation occurs? It is because of the application of RF input voltage onto the standard velocity of the electrons. So, because of this RF input voltage, as the RF input voltage changes in the positive and negative sides, so because of that, the velocity of the electron changes when it is traveling from buncher cavity to the catcher cavity, nothing but from gap A to gap B okay so this is the times that are at different different time slots are given tl is nothing but late electron time and tr is nothing but reference electron time and te is nothing but early electron time <coughs> okay so this is what the operation of the klystron two cavity klystron amplifier okay how it is amplifying the signal with respect to the uh, i have explained the standard a structure of this klystron amplifier and as well as uh, the applicate diagram for the explanation of the bunching process this is called as bunching process okay thank you